What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going over the state annals of Connecticut. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're from Connecticut, please drop a comment down below with if you guys actually knew all this ahead of time. And let's go ahead and get into this article. Like I always like to say guys, I don't own the rights to these articles. I just use them to push long information. I'll put the links to where I got this information down in the comment section down below. Please go over there and show them some love. Number one, state animal, the sperm whale. My sister Macrocephalus, and I'm just gonna go ahead and apologize for my pronunciations. I'm gonna try out the scientific names, but I might not do all that great. Although most whale species are very large bodied animals, the sperm whale is unique for being among the largest. It's capable of growing to around 40 to 60 feet long, with males being slightly longer and heavier than females. It's also common for sperm whales to weigh 10 to 40 tons while fully grown. Newborn sperm whales actually weigh around 2,000 pounds upon birth. Despite being an endangered species today, the sperm whale once played a huge role in Connecticut's economy. In the 1800s, the state's whaling industry was booming. This was thanks to the valuable oily, waxy substance spermaceti in the whale's he massive heads. Crucially, the oily material was ideal for oil lamps at the time, as well as many other staple products. Connecticut's General Assembly certified this species as the state's official animal in 1975. In addition to simply being one of the largest animals on Earth, sperm whales also have the largest brains out of any known extinct or modern animal. Strangely though, since the olfactory system in its brain is very small, sperm whales have a rather poor sense of taste and smell. Not that the whales need to be able to smell, they're able to dive up to 3,000 feet in search of their favorite prey, cuttlefish. Number two, the state shellfish, the eastern oyster. Grass Sostera virginicia? That was a mouthful. The eastern oyster doesn't look particularly interesting or exciting at first glance. But this species is also an important piece of Connecticut's culture and history. In the late 1600s and early 1700s, early European settlers in North America found the eastern oyster to be extremely useful as a food source. Since oysters were very abundant in the area and didn't move very quickly as most fish species do, it was easy for settlers to harvest them in large numbers. Eventually, Connecticut's oyster farming industry got its start in the late 1800s and it continues to thrive today. As a bivalve mollusk, the eastern oyster has a compressed body that fits cozily into a hinged shell made up of two halves. It starts its life as a very small and highly mobile spawn before gradually maturing into a much slower moving adult. While juvenile oysters actually pursue and hunt their food, adult oysters filter feed. Typically, an oyster will move along with the help of its large fleshy foot before finding an area to adhere itself to via said foot. After settling down, it will suck in large amounts of water, eating small organisms like plankton and spitting out the rest of the water and debris. Connecticut's General Assembly officially certified this species as Connecticut's official state shellfish in 1989. Although the state is home to many species of oysters and other shellfish, the eastern oyster is among the most popular and well-known by locals. Number 3. The State Insect European Mantis Mantis religiosa. Connecticut seems as though it would be a bit too chilly for most insects in general, let alone be warm enough for an official state insect to reside in the area. Still, some species manage to take up residence in the area even if only during the warmer months. Also known as the praying mantis for its strange looking posture and distinct positioning of its forelegs, the European mantis is an incredibly resilient insect. Connecticut's General Assembly certified the species as the state's official insect on October 1st, 1977. Like its common name implies, the European mantis is not actually native to Connecticut or the United States in general. In fact, the species doesn't even live in the state year-round. It's native to much warmer regions like Southern Europe, Northern Africa, and some parts of Asia. However, they do migrate to the northeastern United States each summer in large numbers to soak up the sun until they rapidly die off when autumn rolls back around. The European mantis's impressive size is perhaps its most noticeable feature aside from its long, heavily modified forelegs. Fully grown individuals average 6 to 9 centimeters long. Thanks to its large yet speedy body and raptoral forelegs that allows it to reach out and grab its prey, the species is a highly efficient predator. It is also skilled at evading predators of its own. This is partially due to its reliable startle display, where it spreads its wings and bends its legs to make itself appear much larger than it actually is. Number 4. State Bird 
the American Robin, Turdus migratorius. The last of Connecticut's four official state animals is its state bird, the American Robin. As North America's most widespread and abundant land bird, experts estimate more than 370 million individuals exist within its native range. It's also a migratory bird that feeds on plant matter like berries and nuts as well as a wide range of insects. Although it is small and very speedy, it lacks any reliable defenses. This makes it very vulnerable to predators like domestic cats, snakes, and hawks. In total, seven subspecies of the American Robin currently exist. Most subspecies are morphologically very similar and mainly differ by their migratory range. All species share the same distinctly rust-red feathers along the chest and belly. Meanwhile, the rest of its body is dark brown with white accents around the eyes and lower abdomen. On average, fully grown individuals range from 9 to 11 inches in length and have a 14 to 16 inch wingspan. In particular, the Eastern and Newfoundland species are most common in Connecticut as well as much of the New England area. Connecticut's General Assembly certified the American Robin as the state's official bird in 1943. Notably, the species is also the official state bird of Wisconsin and Michigan. And there you have it guys. Those are the state animals of Connecticut. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you already knew all of that, thank you for staying. There was my cat. Thank you for staying until the end. If you guys didn't, I hope you guys learned something. Why, please do me a favor, drop down in the comments if you're from Connecticut and any other cool things you would like for me to go over from that state as far as nature is concerned. As well as while you're down there guys, please remember, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on those notification bells so you never miss another video from me. As well as follow me, other, follow me on my other social medias, which are coming up next, and I will see you guys in the next video.